What's the matter? What's the matter? You think he got cheated? No, but I make a mistake on this Mendoza cattle deal. Paul skinned me alive. Hey, that's not a bad idea, skin you alive. You know, we'd have a rug for the living room, one for the upstairs bedroom, the hallway. Very funny. <laughs> Give me the first one. The sea bag. It's been a fine journey, lad. Pleased to have made your acquaintance, you might say. Aye, sir. Good luck to you. Hey, Andy. Got a meal in there for the cart rats? Well, I ain't sure, horse. Let me go through the pouch. There uh, won't be any letter from Adam, if that's what you're looking for. What makes you so sure, mister? Obviously, you must be Little Joe. And you must be Hoss. My name's Gilly Maples. I'm pleased to meet you. Gilly Maples? Gilly Maples! Oh, Gilly Maples! You're on the boat with Adam, ain't you? <laughs> I was. Uh, only they call it a ship. Hey, Adam rose about the time you pulled him out of the water and saved his life. Oh, well, uh, that wasn't anything. That burn Paul's gonna bust wide open when he hears you're in town. Yeah, well, now, look, I've, I've already got a room reserved. You haven't the got a room. Oh, you no, got a room at the Ponderosa, and that's it. Come on, oh, no, no, wait a minute. No, no I've got a room in the hotel. We're not gonna hear anything like that. Ponderosa, and that's it. Hey, Hoss! Oh, hey, Ain't nothing there from Adam. Now, look, I've got the hotel That's what you think, Andy. Hey, how's he doing? How's he doing? All right. He's not here all day. Hey, he must be working on those dipping pens. He's getting ready for the Mendoza herd. He's going to be tickled pink to see you anyhow, though, Gilly. Well, look, I, I really don't think this is such a good idea. I can just easily go back to town and put up at the hotel. Now, look, you're talking silly again. You kidding? Oh, skin us alive if we didn't keep you out here. I'll make sure I'm going to put your bag upstairs. Well, I guess I just don't have much choice in the matter, huh? That's right. You sure don't. I'll see if old Hop Singh can't rustle up something deep. Mix up home. Right. No, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Not Adam. A shipmate of his. My name's Gilly Maples. Oh, of course, of course. Adam wrote me about you. Well, welcome to the Ponderosa. Hey, How's Paul. my son? Yeah. See, you met Gilly. I sure did. Hey, you saw the surprise, huh? Yeah, what a surprise. Hey, Wonderful put your bag surprise. up in Adam's room. Oh, I appreciate that very much. Uh, Hop Singh's getting you some dinner ready. Hey, well, come on. We'll go upstairs and yeah, get one. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Enough is enough now. You, it's one thing to shower hospitality in our guests. It's another thing to drown them in it. <laughs> <laughs> now, which is it going to be? Food or rest? Well, oh, that, uh, that food sounds mighty tempting. <laughs> All right, come on. Let's have some food. Hop Singh, fix the table. We got a very special here. Here I go. Here? <laughs> no, no, no. 
Up singer, we're about out of food, looks like. I fixed plenty more. You want a family. You got appetite just like Mr. Adam. Oh, nothing more for me, thanks. I'm afraid if I'd have another bite, I'd weigh more than this chair could take. You don't have to worry about that. We've had them all reinforced for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Gilly, I didn't want to interrupt while you were eating, but I wonder... Adam's fine, Mr. Cartwright. Never better. Good. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Did he uh, say anything about visiting at any time? No, sir, I don't think so. He had hoped to be in San Francisco long enough to get home for a few days, but, uh, well, when he heard about the ship pulling out for the South Seas, I, uh, I guess that was a chance he just couldn't pass up. Yeah, well, I don't blame him. First Hawaii, and then the whaling grounds, I figure. Adam thinks that the whale herds are being thinned out too fast, that uh, something's going to have to take the place of whale oil. Thinks maybe copra's the thing. Well, it sounds like Adam, all right. Adam always had a lot of ideas on board, too. <laughs> like the sails. The sails? And he told the first mate that they could get more speed out of the longboats if they rigged the sails a different way. Well, now, this mate, he wasn't too happy about someone telling him how to rig the sails. No, I don't imagine he would. <laughs> well, the point is that... Adam was right. No, no, he was dead wrong. The boat capsized the first time they tried it. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Every time Adam talked about all of you, he'd smile. I'm beginning to understand why now. Gilly, I uh, can't offer you any room. I know you prefer that, but uh, how about some brandy? Aye, aye, sir. Oh, right to that. Right to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in those days, a, a herd of whales would, uh, would extend a, oh, as far as the horizon. It wasn't a question of could you take the whales, it was a question of which one first. <laughs> Ah, New Bedford was the center of the world, man. That's changed, huh? Well, nowadays you gotta look long and hard, Mr. Cartwright. You know, Pop, speaking of hers, when's that Mendoza cattle supposed to arrive? I clean forgot to tell you, fellas. One of Mendoza's advance riders came by today. That herd's been delayed two weeks on the trail up from Mexico. Adam showed me the letter that you wrote to him about all that. Oh, yeah. That must be quite a thing to set up all the way from Mexico. Mm -hmm. Well, this deal took six months to set up. You know, Paul, that, that delay could help us. It'll give us a little more time to round up that gold. The gold? Yeah. Yeah, Mendoza doesn't have too much faith in government, so he wants everything in pure gold. Yeah, Mr. Cartwright, I, uh, I hope you don't mind Adam showing me your letters. No, of course not. Why should I mind? Well, it's just that uh, I, I never had what you could call a, a proper family. And, uh, well, reading letters like yours, I, I sort of adopted you in my mind. Sounds kind of silly, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, doesn't sound silly at all. Matter of fact, I'm kind of glad that Adam adopted you as a friend. Somebody can swim and pull him out of the drink. <laughs> Adam would have done the same thing, Mr. Cartwright. Well, of course he would, but that doesn't change our feeling toward you. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> to my son, Adam. I gave each of the boys one of these money clips. Well, you remember you were talking about feeling. Well, Adam felt the same way as you. That's why he gave me that right after I pulled him out of the water. I'm glad he did. Only I can't keep it, Mr. Cartwright. Well, why not? because it was meant to be his. Well, he wanted you to have it, he gave it to you. No, sir, I just can't. No, he wouldn't take it back. But I'm asking you, as a favor, to take it. You, you keep it for him. Sure. Well, now I better be getting back to town. Well, you mind if I borrow one of your horses? Oh, no, no, of course not. But the, Thanks the, a lot. All of you. Well, Gilly, there's no necessity to go back to town. We have plenty of room. No, sir, Mr. Cartwright. It just wouldn't work. Thanks a lot. Gilly, you're welcome yeah. here, buddy. Well, help him saddle up one of the horses. Oh, 
You're going to have an awfully unhappy mare there, unless you put a saddle blanket on first. Gilly? You're a seafaring fellow. You know, on board ship, everything's done a, a certain way. It's the way it is out here. You just don't turn down a man's invite unless you have a good reason. Have you got a good reason? I told you I don't want to be in the way. And I've told you that you're not in the way. But that's your reason. No, no, Mr. Cartwright, that's not the reason. People like me, we just... We just don't fit in. Especially not around a place like this. A place with a family. Oh, come on now, Gilly. Mr. Cartwright, I've had the wrong shoe on the wrong foot for just as long as I can remember. Other fellas, they, they, they dream about uh, running away to sea. For me, I was a cabin boy at eight. And I hated it. Some of the other fellas on board, uh, like Adam, they'd stand at the rail for hours, just staring out over the horizon. But the ocean only made me feel lonely because there aren't any markers on the ocean. And I'm a man who needs markers. Well, you know what, uh, what are you going to do? The sea's the only thing you know. I'll find something. Yeah, but what do you want? I want to have me a place. A place. Somewhere I can look at and say, this is where Gilly Maples belongs. I want a plot of ground when I go. Not just to be tossed over the side in six feet of sailcloth. Well, you know, young fella, you sound just like the kind of... kind of man we need around here. Now, heaven knows there's plenty of land. All we need is a, a man to work it. And uh, you'll, you'll get the know-how. I will. One way or another. First thing you're going to have to learn is not to put a saddle on backwards. <laughs> Young man, I'm trying to give you a chance to learn these things. Now, I'm not doing it out of the goodness of my own heart or because you're a friend of Adam's. I want you to be a friend of mine, too. Before you leave here, I want you to find that place that you want so badly. Now, let me have my own way in this. Let me be selfish about it. Huh? <laughs> Attaboy. Now, you get yourself inside. We'll see if he can outfit you in some of Adam's old clothes. Get you some land clothes to go with those land legs of yours. Mr. Carwright, I just I don't know how... I said get inside now, didn't I? <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't let any guest of mine take a saddle off his own horse. Frontwards or backwards. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Climb aboard, Gilly. This is the same horse I tried to saddle last night, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same one. Why? He didn't look so big then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Gilly. Horses are a lot stronger and a lot bigger than men, but they ain't got something you got. You got brains, they ain't. Listen, if I had any brains, I don't think I'd be doing this at all. Well, uh, it's the first time for everything. Here we go. I don't think that's right. Well, you got to face the end with the head on it. <laughs> Try again. There you go. All right. Oh. How am I doing so far? 
I think you're a natural-born rider. Well, at riding, I don't know, but sitting there in that saddle, you're doing a real good job. Good. Uh, go on, give her a little kick. She'll start. Oh, I don't want to hurt her. Oh, Gilly, you ain't going to hurt her. Can't talk them out of it, old girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here we go. Hey, come on, relax, Gilly. She's not going to bite you. Don't give her any ideas. Loosen up your ring, Gilly. I, I think I've had enough. You've got a lot to learn yet, Gilly. You're just getting started. Stay with it. Hey, I, I, I mean, I think I've had enough. How do you, how do you stop this thing? Stop. Slow up, at least. You can't be a stopper, please. Before. Never. Well, look, Gilly, as soon as you get used to the horse. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's not that. It's for the first time in my life, after all those years on the sea, here I'm a, a thousand miles from the nearest ocean. I think I'm going to be seasick. Joe, just fine now. Thanks. Here I am. No, I reckon that's sort of a bad suggestion, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it's the thought that counts. Well, uh, what's next? Aside from riding a horse, that is. Oh, well, I'm sure we got a... Look at that terrific stream not too far from the house. Trout about that size. We could have a good oh, time. No, no. I mean, what's next in the way of work? Gilly, you're our guest. We don't want you to run around doing chores and such. No, sit down and relax. I'm a guest. Well, all right. Yeah, relax a little bit. Well, so I'm a guest, huh? Bring me something to eat. Hey, what's that? No, 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 no. I don't mean anything like that. Bring me uh, a roast like we had last night. What? That takes up saying a half a day or so, Gilly, to fix something like that. Yeah, you, you just don't whip that thing up in a minute, you know. No. Well, that doesn't matter to me. I haven't got a schedule to keep. After all, I'm a guest. You know, Gilly, <laughs> I think we just changed our mind about the whole thing while we've been sitting here <laughs> talking. <laughs> well, if I can't be a slave, I want to be a master. You got a deal. Hello, slave. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy to break you back. <laughs> well, how's this for starters? I'm going to go in town delivery stable. I got some stuff to bring in there. You well, come along? That sounds just fine. How about you? Still a sandwich, ain't they? You answer my question. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, there's, uh, there's just one thing. Yeah. The next time you want to be nice to a whaler, don't invite him to go fishing. <laughs> you got a point. Gilly, you got a point. <laughs> sure he's open? I don't see anyone around. Yeah, he's open. He's probably, probably out having lunch or something. You mean he just leaves it like that? The door's wide open? Well, Dave Scissors, there's only one thing a blacksmith's got worth stealing. There's not too many folks around strong enough to lift an anvil. Well, you sure wouldn't find that kind of thinking on a ship. Hey, you gotta watch your belongings every minute, or... Well, what? Well, they're liable to get stolen. Hey, let me give you a hand with that. Uh, don't worry about it. 
We got three more up in the wagon. Hey, first thing you better do is go over and talk to that fellow in the gray suit across the street. That's Mr. Bannerman. He's a clerk at the hotel. You got to cancel that reservation of yours. He'll have his books messed up for a month. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks. Sure thing, friend. Uh, what can I do for you? I, uh... I wonder if you could give me some information. Well, I'll try. But if it's uh, work clothes you're looking for, well, I'd say go down to the mercantile. They got good quality with a pretty fair price. Thanks a lot. Being a stranger in town, I just didn't know. No trouble at all, friend. No trouble at all. straightened out? Yeah. Wasn't mad about you canceling the reservation, was he? No, no, not a bit. B, Master, Ben Cartwright. <laughs> you know where I got this logbook? No. From John Williams? Does he still have his uh, ship's chandlery in New Bedford? He does. Yeah. But his sons help him run it now. Yeah, I bet they do. Yeah. See? I was right. Eight days out of New Bedford when that black squall hit. Gilly, I'll tell you, it was like... It was like doomsday all at once. Two masts snapped like matchsticks. Two? Two of them. When that wind came up, What's the matter? Excuse me. <gasps> what for? <laughs> well, here I am talking to a fellow who wants to leave the sea, and what do I talk about? The sea. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Cartwright. I don't mind. Well, just the same. You'll find that the sea and this part of the country are very much alike. They demand the same things of a man. That's what I told Adam this morning. You told Adam? Yeah, I wrote him a letter. I told him about you visiting us. Well, I wish I could be here to read his answer. Oh, you will, then? Good. Mr. Cartwright, uh, I'm afraid I can only stay long enough to see that big Mexican herd get in. And I don't think Adam's reply can get here by then. Oh, of course it can. I's got the letter on this morning's stage, which means it can catch the pass packet to Hawaii. Oh, Adam's reply and... I heard from Mexico should be arriving at just about the same time. It's important. You don't have the brains of an oyster. This is the last place we should be seen. Morgan, I had to. Something's come up. Bilge! Whatever it is, can't be that important. Morgan, we can't go through with it. Say it again, lad. I surely didn't hear you proper. Cartwright sent a letter to his boy this morning. He thinks that the answer will get here before the herd arrives. Go on. Go... Well, Morgan, they'll know. <laughs> and what'll they do? You've committed no crime. And if the letter arrives after the herd, we'll have the gold and be gone. It's simple. 
Everything's simple to you. I wish I could feel that way. You used to. What changed your feelings? Look, when you got that letter out of Cartwright's sea bag, well, I thought, like you, that it was a, a good chance to get some easy money. It still is, lad. Since then, I've gotten to know these people. Would you like to call it off, then? Would you be willing to consider it, Morgan? I'd sooner give up my eyes, lad. Look at you. You got the guts of a barnacle and the spine of a jellyfish. Now, look, lad, I've helped you. I taught you things, didn't I? All sorts of things. Yes. I took you as a runny-nosed snip of a cabin boy, and I showed you what it was to be a man, didn't I? Yes. I taught you the currents that can run deep in a man, that can spew forth like the struck wheels boiling. Black blood. Yes. Well, my boy, none of the things I taught you, none of them, are more important than this. You and I, we travel no more with a bait fish, lad. We move alone, like sharks. You'll trust me on this, won't you, Gilly? Real pretty. How you doing, Gilly? Okay. You're starting to look real good on that horse. Thanks, but I'm uh, not in your class yet. Well, things take time. We'll have you riding with the best of them before you know it. I'd hate to think about all the things I'd have to learn about ships in the sea. Oh, no, that's not so. I, I could teach you what you'd have to know in no time. And we both got things we could learn. You, you want to learn about sailing and such? Well, not, not to be a regular sailor, but, you know, I get letters from Adam. He talks about things he's seen, places he's gone. It's a lot different than a Ponderosa. Different, yeah. It is that. Depends upon what a man wants for himself, doesn't it? Yep. If you don't want a sick horse on your hands, you better get him in a barn and get him rubbed down. Like you say, I got a lot to learn. Come on. Uh, I'm not gonna leave you, don't you worry. We've been together too long. Saints cooking gets better all the time, don't it? Sure well, does. you didn't like it before, huh? Well, it was tolerable, just tolerable. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you something. Yeah, Hop Saints been outdoing himself ever since Gilly got here. Well, in that case, Gilly, my thanks. How about a game of checkers? Uh, no thanks. I was thinking about heading upstairs to bed. Oh, what's the matter, Gilly? Eat too much? <laughs> no. I'm just a little tired, that's all. Well, what about you, big brother? How about a whooping? Yeah, let's see about that woman. Good night. Night, Gilly. Good night. Good night, Gilly. I like that young fellow. Has either one of you noticed that he bears a certain resemblance to... Adam? Is that what you're going to say, Paul? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, I was about to say that. Hey, you know, Hoss and I were talking about that the other day. We think there's quite a resemblance. They got one thing in common. He takes off by himself every time he's got a thought or a notion he can't shake loose from. Well, I'm glad you both noticed that I <laughs> begin to think my imagination was running a little wild. I wonder why he was so quiet at supper tonight. Yeah, he was quiet, wasn't he? You know, here he is, a young man who's never had a home. Never had the permanency of a family. He suddenly finds himself among people who, who like him and accept him. 
He begins to think that one day pretty soon he's going to have to leave all this. I guess that would uh, quiet a man down thinking that, if that's what he was thinking. So it's no mystery to me why we subdue. No. And I don't mean it was Gilly either. Now, lass, you're a bonny beauty, aren't you? Come here. I should go downstairs. Why? Aren't I treating you with respect, like a proper gentleman? It's not that, Mr. Morgan. It's that I've got a job to keep. Job? You listen to me, my girl. I'm no ordinary sea scum. I'm going to be rich. Do you know what it's like to be rich? No, sir. It's like nothing you've ever known. Gentlemen tip their hats to you in the street, and servants jump when you bark at them. And the ladies? Oh, the ladies, they smile sweetly at you, and they say, no, sir, and yes, sir. Really, Mr. Morgan, I'll get fired if I don't go back to the saloon. You aren't going anywhere till I give the word. Be gone here, wherever the devil you may be. Morgan, it's me. Blast your eyes, glad you've come at a bad time. I had to see you. She brought me a bottle from below. Here you are, lass. Keep the change. Bless you for your kindness. Stow a little of that rum in your bilge, lad. Tell me your news. When Dolce's herd arrives in the morning, by heaven, it's done. Our luck runs ripe, lad. When do they get the gold? In the morning, early. As soon as the bank opens. How will it be guarded? From the bank by uh, three ranch hands, Mr. Cartwright, and me. No good, no good. Too many people. At the ranch house, what happens then? He'll put the gold in the safe until the Spaniard arrives. How many guards then? Most of the men will be busy with the herd. Aye. That's it! We'll strike then like two sharks on a weary swimmer. <laughs> Pour us a drink, lad. We'll drink to our fortune and our glorious future. Well, we go when it's done. Have you ever known the Caribbean, lad? Yes. Hot nights, rum sweeter than any you ever put your tongue to, and bonny girls with a hot sun in their limbs. Oh, it's a musical land. To fair weather and a running sea. <laughs> Just reading before turning in. Thought I heard a horse ride in. That was me, Mr. Cartwright. I I couldn't sleep. I thought a 
ride might cool my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, funny. What you been to see? You're on land. It's hard to get to sleep at nights. You, 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 you miss the feel of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> The creaking of the ropes at night, <laughs> and, 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 and the roll of the ship, and the wind, <laughs> and the flapping of the sails. <laughs> yeah, once you've been to see it, it never leaves you. It's always part of you. And ships, uh, you know, they're like women you've loved. Do you feel bad about leaving the sea? No. No. Life is... Life has been good to me here at the Ponderosa. Yes. You do have a good life here. Yes, we do. And I'm glad you're sharing it with us. Well, I'll get to bed. We got a big day tomorrow. Aye, sir. Good night, Gilly. Good night, sir. sure you don't want me to get your coffee? Oh, come on, Bob. You'll have to go to Carson City to do that. It's a lot of money. Well, that's going to buy a lot of cattle. Now, stop worrying, will you? I got four guns besides myself. All right, boys, let's move out. Right. You better get over to the cattle dipping report the horse there. Yes, sir. And uh, tell little Joe to have Senor Mendoza come by as soon as they start dipping the cattle. I'll do that. You sure you don't want one of us to stay on guard here, just in case? Oh, no. Gilly and I will take care of things. We'll be all right. Oh, uh, uh, Hop Singh set the chuck wagon up in Wilson's drawer. Stop off there if you're hungry. Right. <sighs> Let's get that gold inside and open her up. Oh, why do that? I think Senor Mendoza will want to see what he's getting. <laughs> Well, doesn't he trust you? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if he trusts himself. <laughs> Help you? No, I can manage. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Gilly? A lot of cattle right in there. Uh, look, you don't need me here. Why don't I uh, put my horse away? Now stand up, slow and easy. All right, now drop your gun belt. Come on, come on, come on. All right, now kick it over here. Gil, if you want this gun belt, you better come and get it. Get over there. Go on. Go on! 
Please. I don't want to have to use this gun on you. Do you think you could use it, Gilly? I assure you, sir, he'll use it. He's a good boy, my Gilly. He'll do what I tell him. Who's this, Gilly? A man who wants to see you open that safe. Gilly, who's this man? Never mind who I am. No, wait. Leave him be. I know the combination. So this was your plan, Gilly. Shut up! You know, Gilly, being as you know the combination, we don't need Cartwright no more. Gilly, do you hear, lad? Morgan, will you shut up? I gotta concentrate on these numbers. How much longer is it going to take you? Not much longer. What? Not much longer. Just a few seconds. There it shines, lad. There it shines. What you got to do now, Gilly? Yes, I know. And hurry, lad. Look, I'll fire a shot into the air, and then you can escape. It won't work, Gilly. We'll get over what you're doing to us with the gold, but you'll never get over what you're doing to yourself, Gilly. Gotta go through with it, don't you see that? Yeah, well, you, you'd better take all of the gold. Boys, uh, I want you to have that. Their way of saying, I'd like to have you stay. What's the matter with you, Gilly? Have I got to do this for you? Morgan, no! You keep out of this! You made a mistake, Arthur. Those boys of yours won't even recognize you by the time this gets through with you. I wish I could have 
Hope you find your mark, Achilles. What'd you find out? Well, I found out enough and too much. Paul, how come Gilly would hook up with us, Morgan? He didn't, Hoss. Gilly Maples is still on board that ship with Adam. See, Morgan and the young fellow we knew as Gilly Maples were shipmates of Adam's. They heard him talking about the cattle and the gold. And, well, it was Morgan's idea. He stole Adam's money clip from the real Gilly Maples. Well, you know the rest. Jeez, he fit in so well, it's hard to believe he was an imposter. Yeah. Sure is, isn't it? I prefer to believe he wasn't an imposter. I think I prefer to believe that the two Gilly Maples, the one that saved Adam's life at sea, and the one that saved my life. Let's get home. Are you the Cartwrights? Yes, well, I'm Ben Cartwright. These are my boys. Sergeant Devlin, would you be good enough to accompany me, sir? Yes. You reckon what they're planning on doing, drafting us? Well, you don't have to worry about that. The object is to win wars, not lose them. <laughs> Hello, Ben. Seventeen years, Ben. Remember? The Southwestern Territory, the Apaches, Comanches. Remember? How could I ever forget? My goodness, you're a sight for sore eyes. You, you haven't met my sons. This is uh, little Joe, Colonel Joe. How are you? My son, Hoss. My you pleasure, young gentleman. Uh, well, wonderful. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! I'm sure glad you're home. You're a big guy. 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 you are a big Oh, friend. Oh, of course, oh. of course. Listen, uh, he's got a whole bunch of men outside. Will you uh, get some coffee and uh, make up a mess of sandwiches, will you? For a whole army? Oh, for a whole army, yes. Then I am, sir. The harder to see how Joe. Yeah, yeah, Joe, go. Keith, what brings you to the Ponderosa? To what do we owe this honor? Ben, I've come because I need your help. My help? Major Cartwright was a fine soldier, a man to be counted on for any mission. However difficult or dangerous. Oh, wait a minute. Now, that was 17 years ago. <laughs> ben, I need that dependability again. You know the Indians in this land better than any man in this territory. I need you to guide me to the Jarbridge Mountains. I must find El Coro, war chief of the Paiutes. El Coro? Is that the young fanatic that led that attack at Pyramid Lake a couple of years ago? Yeah. He wiped out almost a whole battalion of militia. He's the one. After that battle, the tribes broke up and scattered. He's up there in that mountain with a band of warriors, women and their children. Some 80 heavily armed men who refuse to recognize the authority of the United States. Ben, I want to talk peace. To convince El Coro that we're willing to extend our friendship to him and his people at almost any price. Colonel, a little band of men you got out there wouldn't stand a chance if the Indians decided to attack you. Precisely why I've brought only a small detachment. 
two troops of cavalry were sent out last year. They were repulsed with heavy casualties. This time, the army feels that we must find El Coro and convince him that ours is a peace mission. Don't you think that a permanent treaty with El Coro is worth the trouble? Yes, of course I do. Then join us, Ben. Yes, of course I will. All right, get ready to move out. Can't hang around here all day. Horses all watered. Canteens all filled. All right, let's move. We got a long way to go. All right, tie off these Irish pendants. Where do you think you are in the Navy? What do you think you're doing? Going with fine, that's what I'm doing. No, you ain't. I'm going with him. Already got my horse saddle and everything. I know you got your horse saddle. I got my horse saddle too, and I'm going with him. No, you ain't. Let me tell you something. No, all right, all right. Now we'll make it a sporting proposition. All right? Sporting proposition. High card goes, low card stays. Wait a minute. Them cards the same one we played poker with the other night, ain't they? Yeah, these are the same cards. Yeah, well, them pasteboards is educated, and you ain't no gentleman. Well, well, just exactly what's that supposed to mean? What, did I cheat? Is that what you're saying? That's right. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think that's very fair. If you just, just look at the cards, there's nothing phony about it all. Just look right at them, take any card you want to take. Okay? Huh. Ace of diamonds. Looks to me like a three of spades underneath there. Nice try. Well, why don't we just stop playing the games and we'll both go? Look, Joe, somebody's got to stay here and look after the ranch, and you know that. I don't doggone it. Well, quit worrying about it. I'll take care of Paul. Well, who's going to take care of you? Now, what's all this about? Little Joe and me are just cutting cards. See who's going to go with you, and I won. I'm going. Oh, I see. I have nothing to say about that. Well, Paul, there ain't no use in both of us staying here. Just take care of the ranch. I mean, one can stay here and... Oh, I see. One of you can stay here and take care of the ranch, and the other can come along and take care of the poor, weak old man. Is that it? Oh, now, come on, partner. That's not what horse meant at all. What we meant... The answer is no. What do you mean, no? N-O, no. Right, look, Paul. You can tell me to jump my well, and I'll do it without thinking twice. But I won that, that card cutting, and... And I'm going. Even if I have to go out there and volunteer and go as a blue coat with the colonel. Now, you make up your mind which way it's going to be. Well, you know, Hoss, you talk that way to El Coro, well, you'll have his whole tribe surrendering. Then I'm going, right? Well, I always said two cartwrights are tougher than one. Come on. Ben, ready to march? Yeah, all right, except uh, one little problem. We have a little mutiny in our hands. We have an extra volunteer. Horse. It's your decision, son. I hope you realize the risk involved. Yes, sir. Goodbye, young man. Good luck, Colonel. Take care of yourself now. Yeah. Little brother, you don't give away a ranch while we're gone. You watch yourself, too. Forget you're the biggest target on the field, aside from that wagon. Prepare to mount! Mount! Out of my two!
Bueno. What is it, Ben? We got company. Where? Over your left shoulder? From now on, we're in their territory. Sergeant Evelyn. Yes, sir. I want a man on point. Also establish flank security about 300 yards out along those foothills. Remember, this is a peace mission. The men are fired on, they'll fall back on the main body without returning fire. Is that clear? Clear, sir. Wiggins, you take the point. Shaw, left flank. Huntley, right flank. And keep your eyes peeled if you want to save your scalp. Keith, might be a good idea to substitute a white cloth for that guide on. They're going to have us under surveillance from now on. We might as well let them know why we're here. Private Lowell, convey that to Sergeant Evelyn. I want the man on point to carry a white flag as a sign of truce. Yes, sir. I thought it'd been due quite the last couple of days. If El Coro decides to attack, we're just going to be setting ducks. Well, let's just hope he doesn't. He can see what a small, peaceful party we are. Keith, you've been fighting Indians long enough to know how unpredictable they are. Look up ahead now. No turning back now. you to control your mouth. Sergeant! Mr. Cartwright! This is a military matter and you'll stay out of it. Oh, Keith, that sergeant was brutalizing the boy. I know enough about the military. I know body. something of the military too, Ben. And I give orders here. Sergeant, one more infraction of the rules and you'll account to a general court-martial. You all right, boy? Keep out of it, Cartwright. All right. Thank you, mister. But I'd best stay out of that sergeant's way if I were you. He's poison. Coffee, Colonel? No, thank you, Poker. That'll be all. Tired, right? No, I'm fine, Poker. Thank you. You can join the others, Poker. I'm sorry about today, Ben. Devlin's a good soldier. I need him. Well, Keith, a good soldier doesn't abuse the men under him. Ben, that boy's carelessness almost cost us the wagon. There are enough food stuff, blankets, and medicines in it to keep El Coro's people alive through the winter. Devlin knows that. I guess he just lost his head. It's been a hard ride. I guess we're all a bit edgy. Let's see now. Barring any hostile action, we should reach the foot of the Jarbridge Mountains in about two days. Yes, yeah, that's the way I figured. This spot might make a good camp. As a matter of fact, it would. Uh, I know it.
splendid. We'll plant our white flag and find some way to bring El Cor to negotiate. Well, that's my job, huh? I'll go on ahead and seek him out. Ben, you know how dangerous that can be. I would like to leave Hoss behind. If El Coro's in any mood to talk, one man's enough. And if he isn't, well, Hoss will just make an extra scalp for him. I don't have to tell you what this means to me, Ben, to the mission. I couldn't ask, yet I knew you'd offer. Look at this, Ben. <laughs> Mexican brandy. And look at the year. <laughs> the same year you and I crossed into Mexico after Comanches. Our baptism of fire, remember? You know, Keith, I've always been suspicious of you. I always figured that underneath that regulation tunic, there beat the heart of an unabashed sentimentalist. <laughs> Duty is a hard mistress, Ben. One day you wake up wondering where it all went. Wondering what you've got to show for all the years, all the scars. But you, Ben, you've got something to point to. You've got three fine sons. Ponderosa, wealth and respect. And I've got... one final mission. And this bottle of brandy. Last mission. Did the last mission. Just a coyote, probably. Yeah, them coyotes may have feathers. But have a look around. Be careful, Ben. I can't afford to lose you. Keith, I can't afford to lose me either. <laughs> Sure enjoy your chow. Yeah, that's mighty good gum, Ruffle. Something, Mr. Cartwright? Don't you? Sergeant, I suggest that you get your men away from the fire. They're sitting ducks there. All right, you men, take cover. Out here, ain't it? Yeah, sort of. Hoss, you and your pa known Colonel Jow a long time, ain't you? Yeah, well, pa has, I ain't. How long you been with him, anyhow, Corporal? Going on ten years. Right through Texas, Kansas, Montana, all them blazing spots. Wherever there was engines to fight. You were sure some fine officer in them days. Learned every bar on his shoulders. Till the creek summit massacre, that is. That was where that whole column of soldiers got wiped out, ain't it? Yes, sir. The coral's braves cut him to pieces. Now your soul and a beast walked away. Colonel Darrell's never the same. His wife and daughter was in that massacre. 
his wife and daughter. Yes, sir. They joined up with a column on their way to be with the colonel. We rode out there the next afternoon and found what was left of them. Thought we'd have to tie the colonel down. Never saw a man act like that in your life. Keep screaming for us to kill, kill. There's nothing to shoot at. An engine inside. Just some wagons. And poor soldier boys. The colonel's dead kinfolk. You telling those stupid yarns again, poker? I wasn't doing nothing, Sergeant. We were just having a little joint session, that's all. Right, Mr. Conrad? Yeah. Crazy old barracks rat. He gets the line worst every year. He was just telling me about the colonel's wife and... Wife and daughter and how they got killed in the massacre? Yeah. No wife, no daughter. Colonel Gerald's never been married. You mean it? all that was... In Poker's head. Now, let me give you some free advice, Cartwright. You stay away from my men. Sergeant, what makes you such a pleasant one, anyhow? Now, get this through your head, Cartwright. Maybe to you and your meddling father, I'm some kind of a dog. Well, if that's so, I only serve one master. Colonel Keith Gerald. I do my job and I don't ask any stupid questions. In other words, I'm a soldier. You get in my way again, and you'll find out the hard way. Don't you threaten me. I'm not threatening you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm just telling you, for your own good. <laughs> Then why is it always so cold in the morning just before the light? Didn't seem that bad in the old days, did it? Well, we don't have the hot blood of youth to help us out today. Don't seem to be helping me much, I'll tell you. How about you, Poker? Cold don't bother me much, sir. I just follow orders. Well, we better finish packing up. Paul, how long did you see it been since you seen Colonel Gerald? Oh, about 17 years, I'd say. Why? Talking to old Poker last night, and he told me the Colonel lost his wife and daughter in that Creek Summit massacre. He ever mention that to you? I mean, yeah. Just wonder. We buried him out. We buried him out. Out! Colonel, who's riding point today? Poker? Sir? You ride point. Get moving, poker.
sir. That's that's poker's horse. man. <laughs> Stop sniveling. He died like a soldier. Sergeant, form a burial detail. You're gonna need a new point, man. I'm volunteering. You're a civilian. You're not obligated. Nevertheless, you're gonna need a new man. It's up to you, son. So long, Paul. Yeah. Forward! Well done, young Cartwright. The courage and fortitude to volunteer to ride point. Uh, wasn't much to it, Colonel. Those Indians tired pretty fast. I don't reckon they was bent on killing any of them. Those red devils are always in a killing mood. Keith? How come you didn't tell me about your wife and daughter being killed by Indians? Let's get some sleep. Keith, I asked you a question. Tomorrow's another day, Ben. We'll talk then. Good night. Thank you. How's it going? What's the matter? Cartwright, you and your old man, well, most of it in South Pit, we, we think you're all right. You, you trying to tell me something, Wiggins? Did Lowell talk to you? No. Why? Poker was a friend of mine and Lowell's. The night before he got it, he told us about the colonel's plans. He said he wasn't going to go through with it. He said he was going to tell you or your pa. Devil and hurt him. That's why he put him out on the point to die. Look, buddy, you ain't, you ain't making a whole lot of sense to me. You got to help us, you and your pa's. 
What are you talking about? Gerald didn't come here to make no peace. Oh, he talked headquarters into thinking so, but that ain't what he's got on his mind. He come here to wipe out Elcor and all those Indians, all of them. With ten men? I'll show you something that'll convince you. I'm going. Ben, it's time. Yeah. Soon be sun up. Yeah. Good luck. What's your horse doing here? I made up my mind, Paul. I'm going with you. We had this out last night. You're staying here. Oh, Paul, there's something going on around here. This whole setup. If there's something wrong with this whole setup. If. Paul, you know it is. First, it was poker. Then Wiggins, they both tried to tell me something. I'm trying to say something to you if you listen. If there's something wrong, it's better for you to stay here and keep an eye out for both our sakes. I've got to go see El Coro. You're right. Now you take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. Be careful. Something troubling you, young man? Well, Colonel, now that you mention it, yeah. A couple of things. First is El Coro, and then you. There's some questions I'd like to get some answers to. Answers? That's right. <laughs> the answer, young Mr. Cartwright, can be found in that wagon. You have my permission to enter it and look. Colonel, you can't... Relax, Sergeant. We'd have uncovered our little secret presently, anyhow. A few hours, more or less, scarcely matters. Go ahead, have a look. Interesting weapon, don't you agree, Mr. Cartwright? Never saw anything like it. What is it, anyhow? It's newly invented by a man named Richard Gatling. It'll give this small unit the firepower of a hundred men. You plan on using this? Precisely. With that gun and the element of surprise, peace should come rather quickly, I should say. It's the only way peace can be achieved. You're out of your mind. On the contrary, I'm a realist. These inferior savages who stand in the way of our civilization must be annihilated. It's the only way. Sergeant Devlin? Place Mr. Cartwright under guard. If he tries to escape, shoot him. 
What about my Paul? Your father will be a regrettable sacrifice for the cause of peace. For that, I'm truly sorry. Not half as sorry as you're gonna be. Red house, red fight! I think I got him, sir. He won't go far. But what if he does? Well, we can't go after him. We can't leave the Gatlin gun. I don't like it. Well, neither do I, but we don't have much choice, do we? came to see you, El Coro. You have found me, Ben Cartwright. I wish to speak of peace with honor. Then you are a welcome sight to my eyes. Come with me. tell you, Ben Cartwright, that in these mountains our people are starving, our horses are dying. We have no food, no ammunition, and each day I bury men who are like my right arm, good fighting men who die of the lung sickness. In the beginning I had 50 warriors. Now I have 15. Even the will to fight is dying within us. Then make peace. The white man's peace. My warriors have fought well, Ben Cartwright. They are men, not animals. They could not endure prison or slavery. Poor Coro, they... They won't be slaves. I give you my word. And Colonel Jarrell, the soldier who is with me, he's empowered to make a peace treaty with you. And that treaty will be honored. You have my word on that. What will happen to my people? Nothing will happen to them. They'll go to the reservation at Pyramid Lake. But they'll be free to hunt, to farm, to live. This was once all our land. We were free to hunt everywhere, as far as we could ride. Now that time is gone. It is gone. I cannot bring it back. All right. I will meet with a soldier. We will make a treaty. Good. You're a true chief to your people.
What is it? A white man. My warriors found him in the desert not far from here. He's been shot by your soldiers. I will deal with the soldier. Hold on, hold on. Wait, I'll call him. You, you can't face those soldiers alone. Stay here with your son. When I return, we will talk. El Caro, let me deal with him. I will let you bury him. there. I can feel them. We won't see them till they're right on top of us. All the better. Side, huh, Colonel? It's only the beginning, Sergeant. They'll be back. See to the men, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Only one survivor, sir. Lowell. He'll live to hang. Sergeant. Sergeant Devlin. Many of my men were killed. Thirsty work for you, huh, boy? Well, don't worry. It'll soon be over. When I get through, there won't be a single Indian left. Nothing can stand against me. I'll destroy everything that does. It's Mr. Cartwright, sir. I've got eyes. Gerald, I'm coming in. Don't do it, Ben. Don't try it. Drop to the ground, Cartwright. There's been enough killing here today. I gave you an order, Ben. Do I have to kill you? Came here to make peace. 
There'll be no peace till they're all dead. You don't know what you're saying, Gerald. They've got to die, every one of them. You're gonna have to kill me too. I'm going to fire, Ben. This is an automatic weapon. It'll kill every one of you. Nothing can stand against it. No, no, Colonel. I've got to kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. You don't understand, Ben. I've got to kill them. They massacred my wife and my daughter. I've got to kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. <laughs> Peace, Ben Cartwright. Yes. Yes, we want peace. on you, brother, that's for sure. <laughs> Joseph, the inner man must be taken care of. Absolutely. If that inner man ever got out, he's big enough to take on the both of us. <laughs> All we got left to do is pick up that sugar and grain. Come on. Right. Horse Cartwright. Your time has come. There is no escaping. It is time, Horse Cartwright. How does she know who I am? I don't know. Let's go find out. Joe. It is time to have your palm read, Horse Cartwright. How did you know my name, anyhow? Madame Adela knows all. Well, go ahead. Why don't you let her read your palm? You got nothing to lose. Oh, but Joe, this whole thing's a bunch of Tom foolishness. Such talk is foolishness. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. Don't talk foolish. After all, I, I think you probably have a fascinating palm. Of course, with the size of this hand, it may take two or three sessions, ma'am, but I'm sure you can figure it out. we got things to do now. Come on. Then you will die. I'm gonna miss you, Hoss. You mock my powers. It is easy for you. It is your brother who is in danger. Yeah. That stuff sure is silly, isn't it? Yeah, silly. It's amazing that people still believe in that sort of thing. Yeah, amazing. And you know that it's sad that people will actually spend money on that kind of foolishness. Yeah, it's sad. What does it say? I see a tall man. He is handsome. His hair is gray. He seems disturbed about something. Yeah, that'd be our Paul. He's disturbed because we ain't home them supplies yet. Come on, Joe. Yes, yes, that would be the reason. Yeah, well, let's go. Wait! Wait! I see a woman. Oh, yeah? Go on, go on. Is she pretty? No. No, she is not pretty. She is beautiful. Oliver, 
Come, come. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I see her clearly now. She's tall, statuesque. Her hair is golden like the sun. Her eyes are sparkling like the stars. The moment you meet, she will fall in love with you. Yeah? <laughs> What I see is true. All that I say shall happen. You mean I'm really going to meet this gal? With hair as golden as the sun. With sparkling eyes. <sighs> you can have them now, Dad Murray. Come on. Well, I wouldn't stake your life on it. <gasps> what's, what's, what's the matter? What it is nothing. Say? Never mind. The reading is over. But wait a minute. You just... The got... reading is over. One dollar a quarter, please. A dollar? A you said just a dollar. I... With your hand, you need a rabbit's foot. Yeah, I know. Please go. Thank yeah. you. Come on, Joe. See, Austin, the dinner's just for knowledge word. I studied the bumps on your head. Yeah. Now, figure you let me whap you one good with an axe hail on top of the head, and you'll have a fortune to make him sit up and take notice. No, I don't want to stuck now. That stuff is no better than that. Great bumps. Get it. Go. So watch where you're going, you clump. as gold as the sun. Yeah, and big sparkly eyes. I'm so sorry I didn't see you. Here, let me help you. No, oh, ma'am, it's, it's all right. I didn't hurt you, did I? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm Kathleen, Kathleen Walker. I'm happy to meet you, Miss Walker. I'm Hoss Cartwright. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, you can just call me Hoss. <laughs> you can just call me Kathleen. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's my little brother, little Joe Cartwright. Kathleen? Ka Kathleen? You aren't married, are you, Hoss? No, ma'am, not a bit. Are you courting? Uh huh. Not so you'd notice it, no, ma'am. Why? Because I want you to court me. You want me to court you? Would you, Hoss? Would you? What's going on here? Oh, Papa, I want you to meet Hoss. Don't worry, Kathleen. I'll handle this. Oh, but Papa, he wasn't. Oh, now, listen, no standing up for him. I know his type. Are you getting a wagon? Uh, I'll handle this, Romeo. Romeo? I ain't no ladies' man. Papa, I saw what you were trying to do. I got eyes. Now, get in the wagon, like I said. Now, no man makes a proper advances to my daughter without answering to me, hey, John sir. Walker. Oh, now, you, him him you stay proper. out of this. You ain't gonna talk yourself out of this one. I'm gonna give you the beating of your life. Oh, come on now. I ain't gonna fight a guy your size. Don't you worry about my size. I whip men twice your size. Well, nevertheless, I... Uh, 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 now, oh. get up and fight. Uh, I knew I had you figured out right. No backbone. Now, I'll let that be a lesson to you. And you stay away from my Kathleen. Yes, sir. I sure will. And get off my brain. Uh, 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 uh. Sure does hit hard for a little man, don't he? Yeah. He hits hard for a little mule, you mean. Uh, oh. Hey, Joe. Did you see the way that guy looked at me? Yeah. yeah I saw it, but I don't believe him. It's just like that made him... Adela said it would. You know, maybe she's got something after all. Well, maybe she was right about Kathleen, but she sure forgot to mention the father. Oh. Ooh, that's gonna be sore. You better get some beefsteak on that. Yeah, as soon as we get home. Hey, here comes Seth. I'll get that order filled. Hey, Seth! Can you get this order filled for me real quick? We gotta get on our way. Oh, sure can, little Joe. Five sacks of grain and two sacks of sugar? Right. 
Well, I'm out of grain. I haven't got any sugar either. What, you, you sold out of both of them? That's right, sold out. That new man, John Walker, came in with his daughter and bought out all my grain and sugar. <sighs> That's just great. Now, what are we going to tell Paul? What are we going to tell Paul? We'll tell him they're sold out of it. That's all. I got a load of supplies coming in the morning. Thanks, Seth. Uh... You know, Joe, this is all your fault. We should have come here straight away, just like I wanted to in the first place. What do you mean, it's my fault? I'm not the one who had my fortune told by that, that Madame Adela. Not to mention that mess you got into with Kathleen and her father. You saw Madame Adela Hoss? Ain't she a marvel? She predicted I'd sell out of grain and sugar. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you believe in that stuff, too. Well, you ain't walking out of here with any sugar, are you? She's truly a marvel. Don't you think so, Hoss? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a marvel, sir. Come on, Joe. Let's go home. <sighs> Just about to come into town looking for you. What took you so long? Oh, were we, were we gone long, Pa? Were we gone long? Can't you fellas ever go into town, go right into town, and come right back? Where all the supply, Mr. Hoss? Oh, I'm saying we didn't get them. You see, Paul, Seth was all out. Yeah, no, no, no grain, no sugar. Oh, yeah. All out, and you came back empty, right? Yeah, well, there's going to be some tomorrow, though. He said he'd have a shipment in there tomorrow. Well, pick it up first thing in the morning. Right. All right, first thing in the morning, you go into town and pick up those supplies. Yes, sir. sir. No sugar. No pie, no dessert, no nothing. Yeah, that you like that, Hong. It's been like that all day. Why can't you? What happened to your eye? Well, it's funny you should ask, Paul. But... Wait a minute. Don't tell me. I have a feeling I shouldn't know. Here your coffee, little Joe. Ah, thank you, Hobbs. Eh? I'm gonna stay up and read for a while. Pa's going to bed. I'm <coughs> saying, <coughs> what's the matter with that coffee? No sugar. Yeah, well, no, <coughs> no sugar is one thing, but what you put in it? Chinese sweet, vinegar root. You know, like you bring Hobbs in sugar. You hear us up game, we do guide hard. And you take your feet off the table. I wonder if he knows what he's saying. Oh, Madame Adele. I what? must talk to your brother at once. It is a matter of life and death. Life or death? Yes, life or death. Life or death. Uh, I'll get him. Why don't you make yourself at home? Thank you. Hey, Hoss! Yeah. You got a visitor. Who is it? It's a lady you met in town today. She alone? She sure is. A 
Be right down. talk to you at once. It is urgent. What about? In all my years of fortune telling, I have always told the truth. You mean what you told me ain't the truth? Of course I told you the truth. I just did not tell you all. Yeah, we know you left out Kathleen's father. Yeah. I am telling you, Craig Bonner is the man to fear. You have heard of Craig Bonner. Craig Bonner? Craig, oh, Craig Bonner! Craig, Craig Bonner, the, the gunfighter. Everybody's heard of him. Today, when I read your palm, I saw a danger in this man. At first, I did not want to tell you all that I saw. At last, I feel better. Now that the whole truth is out, a stone is lifted from my heart. Uh, madam, wait a minute. What, uh, what's this Craig Bonner got to do with me? <laughs> <gasps> Craig Bonner rides to Virginia City for one reason. To kill Hoss Catwright. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to explain to you that this Madame Adela makes money by scaring people like you. Look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. She's going to show up in a couple of days. She's going to tell you she'll protect you from this Craig Bonner as long as you cross her palm with a little silver. Yeah, maybe so, Joe, but that bird, she's been right about everything else. Yeah, we ought to try reading her palm sometime. I'll tell you right now, it's going to say right across it, E Pluribus Unum. You thought to the right. Nobody can tell future by looking at the palm. You're absolutely right, I'm saying. That is all hoglash. No, no, I have to hogwash. That's why I say hoglash. Um, yeah. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell. Now, this is only way to tell future. Oh, come on, Hop Singh. Come on, Joe. We got things. Oh, sticks show what happened in future. Oh, come on, Hop Singh. I mean, you're, you're being just as bad as this Madame Adela. You're wrong. She, Madame Adela, come lately. Chinese been telling future since long before Great War in China. Now, you drop sticks, Mr. Horse. Come. Where they fall is how everything's going to be for you. Well, if it doesn't work out, we can always play tiddlywinks. All right, Hopsing, I'm going to do it, but not because I believe it. Just trying to understand and be nice, that's all. I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, now, what do they say? I know Sticks will tell. Yeah, but what do they tell? They say somebody coming to Virginia City to kill you. Uh, very good, Hopsing. And don't try it again. Madela, I foretell the future. Your life is in great danger, Craig Bonner. I know, I know. 
Get that black cat out of here, lady. You know nothing. There is more to be told. Come to my tent at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Your life depends on it. That's all. Well, checking what? Oh, for strangers. Oh, Hoss, come on. Are you still are you still worrying about that gunfighter business? Joe, I ain't worried about no gunfighter or nobody else. It's just, we'll make sure that's all. Well, look, this is nonsense. Now, nobody can predict the future, right? Am I right? Right. All right, then let's go in and get the supplies before something happens. Yeah. What do you mean, before something happens? Oh. Oh, good morning, boys. <clears throat> good morning, Seth. <laughs> good morning, Seth. We uh, come in to pick up the supplies. Well, let's see. That was five sacks of grain and two sacks of sugar, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and, and Paul wants some pipe tobacco, too. Well, I'll have it for you as soon as the supply wagon gets here. You mean it ain't here yet? Oh, it's a little late. Be an hour or two. I'm sorry, but these things happen. Uh, well, what do we do now? Well, that burner, we can't go back home without it. So might as well just wait around here, huh? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we go out and pick up the mail and then go over to the saloon and have a beer? All right. Just one beer, though. I don't want nothing else to go wrong. What'd you go wrong? Two fellas having a beer. <laughs> Hardly anybody ever gets killed in the saloon. <laughs> hey, Dean, got any mail for us? Strange. Joe, that's it. You're uh, you're back there, is he? I'm so happy I ran into you in town today. Yeah, well, I, was, uh, I was sort of hoping I'd see you in town today, too, ma'am. I'm sorry about your eye. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. It ain't too sorry anymore. Well, thank you, Dean. Sometimes Papa treats me like I was a little girl. You don't think of me as a little girl, do you, Hoss? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not at all. Don't you think I'm old enough for courting? Yes, ma'am. Will you court me, Hoss? <laughs> if you really want me to. <laughs> oh, Hoss, oh. oh, I don't want you to. More than anything, I want you to. But what about your Paul? You know, I got a funny feeling he don't like me much. Oh, he will once he gets to know you, Hoss. It's just that since Mama died, it's just been me and Papa. I'm all he has. He, he just doesn't want anything to happen to me. Yeah, well, the way he looks after you, ma'am, there ain't much likelihood of anything happening to you. <laughs> Where uh, is your Paul now? Well, he's over at the bank taking care of some business. You do like me just a little bit, don't you, Hoss? Well, I, I like you a bunch. <laughs> Will you come by the house tonight? Why, yes, ma'am. I'd love to. But, uh, what about your Paul? Oh, um, well, I'll take care of it. I'll talk to Papa. Is 8.30 too late? No, ma'am. 8.30 is just fine. Oh, dear, there's Papa. Oh, 
Klaus, will you look your very best tonight? I want you to make a good impression on Papa. Yes, yes. Bye. Yes. Hotel stoop. Yeah, who's he? That's Greg Bonner. He's reputed to be the greatest gunfighter in this whole territory. Oh, yeah. Water, Hoss, you're looking a little pale. Oh, Lordy. How doing, brother? Joey's here. Hmm? He's here. Supply wagon? Good. No, no, him. Him? Who's him? Greg Bonner, that's who. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just seen him with my own eyes. Well, what's he look like? Well, he looks like something I don't want to get messed up with, that's for sure. That burn everything that Madame Adela said's come true. Oh, now, Hoss, come on. Will you relax? He's probably just passing through. Joe, she ain't been wrong about nothing. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, I, I want to stay away from him, that's for sure. Hey, Roy! Roy, come here a minute. Excuse me. What's up? What's that fella doing in town, anyhow? Well, he's looking for someone in town, but he won't say who. What's the matter, Hoss? You coming down with a grip or something? No, I'm I'm just fine, Roy, just fine. Hey, listen, Roy, what do, you, what do you know about him? Well, just that he's supposed to be about the fastest gun around. Yeah, well, he must be wanted somewhere for something. Yeah. Nothing that I know of. I've heard tell he's killed about 12 men. Thirteen, to be exact, but there was all fair fights. Well, boys, I'll see you later. Thirteen? Thirteen. That's an unlucky number. Yeah. If I was him, I'd kill another guy just to get off that number. Yeah. I'd know that perfume anywhere. Oh, what are you doing here? What am I? It's me, Craig Bunner. What's all this old hello business? Well, I just didn't expect to see you, that's all. <laughs> Surprised, huh? Oh, am I? <laughs> How's about giving your fiance a big kiss? Well, not, not here, Craig. Why not? You're my girl, aren't you? You ain't been fooling around with any other guys, have you? No, of course not. What do you think I am? A woman. Now, I come nearly 400 miles to find you, and I ain't in no mood to play games. Well, I'm not playing games, Greg. Not with you, honey. See, I came to town because I, I had this appointment at the, at the dressmaker, and I'm, I'm having this dress made. It's red, your favorite color. That's good. Red's my favorite color. Now, you wear it tonight because I'm coming calling. I've got something mighty important I want to talk over with you. Uh, well, uh, see, I'm late for the dressmaker now, Craig, and... And you know how they are about appointments, so I'll see you goodbye. Wait! Where do you live? Women. Hey, hey, come on, will you stop being so nervous? You're gonna break out in a rash. Joe, Joe! 
There he is. Greg Bonner. What are we going to do now? Will you stop worrying? Just walk naturally. He doesn't know who you are. Any. I want to see where he's going. Madame Adela. Right, what he's gonna do in there? You know, maybe he's gonna get his palm red. Yeah, his gun hand. I wonder what it says. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> You are standing on the street, Main Street. You are facing a man, a big, strong man. You are wearing a gun. He is wearing a gun. You are faster than he is. But you do not win the fight. I see you lying very still in the street. You are bleeding and your eyes are closed. Am I dead? This I cannot foretell. Only that you are bleeding. I can't stand the sight of blood. It makes me sick. There is only one way to escape your fate. How's that? You must leave Virginia City. Go far, far away. You must leave at once. Today. You mean run? Yes, for your life. Craig Bunner, don't run from man nor beast. How much time have I got? Time is running out. The man you will meet is Hoss Catright. He is a very dangerous man. You must run quickly. If you meet him... If I meet him, I'll kill him. Oh, uh, what happened? I just shot myself in the foot. I'm serious. You're delirious is more like it, isn't it? Papa, this is different. It's different about it, don't you? Well, this is it's true love. It's, it's a pure love. And I'm reborn. Just one more time, Catherine, please. Just once more. Well, there's nothing new about moonshining. This is not moonshining. Why, this ingenious machine. It's going to create an elixir of the ages. It's going to be Dr. John Walker's. Infinite bromide. Just think what that will mean to mankind. Just think what it will mean to me. It's the dream of my life. No more two-bit schemes. And Aunt Adela, she can give up fortune telling. And you and she and I will travel. We'll be rich. And what's that got to do with Hoss Cartwright? Why, everything. Hoss has got money. And you as Hoss's fiance. You'll have access to that money. We can't do anything about this dream without Hoss's money. You, 
You wouldn't turn your back on your poor father, would you? Papa, I just want to live my own life. What? Married to some broken down two-bit gunfighter who find himself shot in the belly in some back alley someday? I love Craig. It seems to me you told me that you'd never marry a man who totes a gun. Papa, what am I going to do? I'm so mixed up. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm almost finished with our elixir. And when it turns to that golden hue, your Aunt Adele and I, we're going to go on the road and we'll make a fortune. And what about me? You'll be free as a bird. You can marry anybody you want. Please, Kathleen, please. Just one more time. This is really the last time. I promise you. No more schemes. As soon as I finish this one. Agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much, Mr. Kane. Good day. Hey, Seth. No supplies come in yet? No, sir. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Ah, oh, good. You just kill it for that green sugar as we'll pick it up. Right, well, hey, don't forget Farmer's pipe tobacco. Yeah, and the pipe tobacco. Well, the tobacco I can let you have, but I'm out of grain and sugar again. What? That's right, Hans. How can that be? You said the wagon just came in 20 minutes ago. Well, that's true, little Joe, but uh, John Walker came and bought all my grain and sugar. Just getting started, I guess he's kind of short of supplies himself. Well, yeah. doggone it, Seth. You knew we were coming back here. Why don't you save yeah. some of it for us? Business is business. And in my business, first come, first serve. Well, Thanks a lot. Well, now what do we do? Well, Dad, Bernie, we can go back home without it, that's all. Paul sure is going to be sore, though. I can say that again. Wait, don't forget your pa's tobacco. Thanks a lot, Seth. Hey, Art. Yeah, thanks. I'd hate to go home empty-handed. Tell your pa there'll be a load of fresh supplies in the morning. And don't be late. Oh, business has sure been good. Fine. Better fix up the bond, too. Seth was all sold out. Yeah. Sold out. All sold out. No nice sugar, thing. no grain. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the supply wagon didn't come in. Is that is that correct? No. No, it did. It came in. <laughs> oh, the supply wagon came in. And what happened? Well, Paul, it, it got there about an hour late, see, and old Seth said we might as well hang around and wait, so we went up the saloon and waited. And had yourselves a couple of beers. No, 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 just, just one. I mean, he, he had one, and I had one. I see, one beer each. Then what happened? Well, Dad, Bernie Paul, when we got back over there at the store, the, the wagon had come and gone, and Seth has already sold out again. I see, it's just sold out again. No grain? No okay. grain. No sugar? No sugar. Didn't bring anything back, is that correct? I don't know. We, uh, we, uh... Oh, you did bring something back. What's that? Uh, uh, you pipe tobacco. Oh, my pipe tobacco. A whole lot of it. Well, isn't that nice of you? I have some advice for you. Give that pipe tobacco to Hop Singh. It might help allay his feelings. He's been waiting for those supplies for two days. Tell you wasn't the best I thought it was gonna be. You always chew that. <laughs> well, I got the flowers, Hoss. Don't ask me where I got them. Where'd you get them? Well, you know that planter box Hop Singh's been working on all spring? Oh, Joe, he's mighty proud of them flowers. <laughs> 
Well, we had to get some kind of a bouquet for Kathleen. Yeah, but if he finds out about it, he, he won't feed us for six months. Well, now, what's more important, you missing a few meals or, or making Kathleen happy? Now, that ain't a fair question, is it? Everything is fair in love and war. Now, here, I got your buggy waiting. Yeah. How do I look? You look beautiful. You look absolutely beautiful. Really? Yeah. Whenever Kathleen sees in you, there sure is a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's go. You're late. All right. Wait, Joe. You, you sure now? I mean... You couldn't look any better. Believe me. Just tell me how a man could shoot himself in his own foot. Believe me, it wasn't easy. The doctor said he'll be laid up for a week. Oh, that's great. That's just dandy. You sure messed things up, didn't you? I did. Yes, you. You're supposed to scare him out of town, not cripple him so he can't even run around the block. How was I to know he was so clumsy? Isn't he supposed to be the big gunfighter? And now you tell me Kathleen is sweet on him. You're supposed to be able to predict the future, aren't you? Why, you fake you. Fake, am I? Why, you miserable excuse for a brother. All right, now, sis, calm down, calm down. It's not going to do us any good standing here yelling at each other. Now, what I'm worried about is Craig Bonner going to stay put. Just a minute. Just a minute, dear. Don't be so impatient. Craig... You wasn't expecting someone else, was you? Oh, no. Uh, what happened? I had an accident. An accident? Look, it's a long story, and I just assume not go into it right now. I think I'd better sit down. Oh, well, uh, Flowers. You know I get sneezy around them. Yes, dear. Flowers. Craig, don't you think that... I think I'd better sit down. It's a good idea. Here. Ah. The chocolate. Chocolate. You know I get itchy around them. Oh. Oh, Craig, what am I going to do with you? Is there anybody in the house? No. We're all alone. Why? Craig, you're wearing glasses. You noticed. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Honey, who's that? Oh. What's the matter? Oh, it's 8.30, Craig. So it's 8.30. So what are you getting so nervous about? You act like you got a keg of powder in your bustle. I think I have. Who is that? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll go see. Get rid of whoever it is. Craig, do you trust me? You're a woman. No. Well, you just have to because I can't. Ow! You Craig, stepped on my sore foot. Please, get but... Please, Craig, no matter Wait. what happens, no matter what you hear, that you'll trust me. Please, promise. Women. You look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, is your Paul anywhere about? Oh, well, he's gone into town. He'll be back soon. Come on, sit down. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bless you. That wasn't your Paul? Oh, uh, he had to go into town. He'll be back soon. Achoo. Well, who's that? Oh, he must have um, been the dog. He's been sick. Hoss, uh, I told Papa he was wrong about you and that I'd invited you out here. Yeah? What, uh, what did he say to that? Oh, he said he was looking forward to meeting you. Yeah, I'll bet he is. Oh, no, he is, Hoss, really. You're sure? Oh, if there's one man I know, it's Papa. And if he didn't want you to come, he'd have said so. Hoss, you were telling the truth, weren't you, when you said you weren't courting anyone but me? Well, yes, ma'am, I was telling the truth. You're the, you're the only one I'm courting. Glasses. Here, glasses, glasses. Here. And you really like me? 
You got some? <laughs> Do you really mean that, Oz? Sure, I mean it. And you care? I mean, you really care? Yes, ma'am. I, I like you a bunch. Oh, Oz. I think I'm losing my hearing, too. Kathleen! Papa! Wait, Mr. Walker! Mr. Walker, this ain't what it looks like. It ain't, huh? And what are you doing here alone with my daughter? Well, it seems to me you've got her in a mighty compromising position. But, and it also seems to me that there's only one honorable solution, and that's marriage. Boss, we have no choice. I've... I've heard enough. No, Craig. I've come here after ten years of courting you, Kathleen, to take you as my bride. My eyes have gone bad, and I've given up gunfighting forever. I even bought that little ranch, just like you wanted. But when I get here, what do I find? You've given up gunfighting? Why didn't you tell me, Craig? You never gave me a chance, fooling around with this Yahoo here. Oh, Craig, you don't understand. I understand what I hear, and I hear you're going to marry this no-good galoot. Well, I've heard enough. I'm leaving forever. <laughs> Bless you. Oh. Oh, Craig. Craig. What's the matter with you? Ain't you got no blood in your veins? Go get her. You're right. Now, see here. Miss Kathleen, I, I ain't afraid of him. Hey, you. Hoss, I love him. Oh, well, that's different. See, Mr. Walker. you ever see him anyway? Why is he holy? Holy. I'm beautiful. You ain't gonna Bye, still. Don't even ask. Did something go wrong? Not all together. I didn't get to court her none. She's already courting another fella. Craig Bonner. She's gonna marry him as soon as her Paul gets out of jail. Reason or Paul went to jail. Forget it. Like you said. No, don't even ask. Uh, I'll put these in some water for you. Thanks, Joe. Socialize, come in on your own time, do it. Let's get these chores done. I usually can get one of those. Hey, how are you, Miss Betty? Oh, oh. Good to see you. Oh, she's pretty. Hey, here comes the stage. We got to run there from that. Oh. Hey, come on. Come on. We got to run there from that, man. Hey, will you come on? You know, if you just break down and spend a few dollars, you get a pair of boots that fit. Hey, Charlie, got any mail for us? No mail on this trip, little Joe. Hi, right, Charlie. Will you be staying at the hotel, miss? No, I'd like to engage a carriage. Yes, ma'am. Why do you reckon anybody want to cover up like that? Oh, I don't know. I sure would like to get a look at what's underneath that veil. Yeah, probably uglier than a mud fence. <laughs> well, look, you want to stand here and socialize or get your work done?
Mrs. Lip, Miss. Would you mind waiting a minute? I'm not sure I'll stay. Anything you say. I had no place else to go. Why here? Amelia, we're sisters. I need help. You're the only person that can help me. Life shows in your face, Reagan. But it makes me ashamed you're my sister. All right. I don't know why I should, but I'll help you. However, you'll have to wait until the bank's open in the morning. You can stay at the hotel overnight, and I'll... I'll leave an envelope for you at the desk after nine. That's not the kind of help I need, Amelia. Well, I don't know what other kind of help I can give you, Reagan. Please, Amelia. Please, Amelia. Amelia, please. It's always been Amelia, please, hasn't it? Even now, fresh from your triumphs in San Francisco. You heard about that? Oh, yes, I heard. I heard about that incident and all the other incidents, too. People write, Reagan. There are always people to write to you about things like that. I didn't do anything. I couldn't help what happened. So I remember that's exactly what you said seven years ago with Charles. Amelia, that wasn't my fault. Wasn't it just? Well, he loved me, Reagan. For two whole years, Charles courted and loved me. And the day you came home from the school and displayed your feminine charms, he didn't even want me. Well, I don't blame him. No, you corrupted him like you've corrupted everything around you ever since you've been a child. Judging from your last escapade, you still haven't changed. I know what I am, Amelia. But I can't change unless you help me. Please, Amelia. You owe it to me. Owe it to you! Just remember this, Reagan. I don't owe you anything. Yes, you do. You do owe it to me, Amelia. For all of the love that Father gave to you. The smart, clever one. And denied me. Please, Amelia. Very well. Very well, I will help you. But you'll have to do as I say. And exactly the way I say for you to do it. As I promise. your driver. Bring in your luggage. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Charlie. What Adam say, Paul? Says the assay report in Sacramento was excellent. Hey, did I tell you? When's he coming home? Oh, not for a couple of days. He's having some meetings with a firm of mining engineers in San Francisco. Let me see. 
Now, look how, sir. Go get the wagon. Will you bring it around? Let me read it. You have all the way home to read it. Now, read the wagon. Yes, sir. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Yes, this will do. You sure this is what you want, Miss Miller? We got a little more expensive line that's yes, a lot this, more stylish. This is, this is what I want. This is what I want. Reagan. Hmm? Yes, those will be just fine, Amelia. Well, you'll need several for daytime and at least one good black for church. Mr. Ramos, do you have my uh, pattern in a smaller size? Oh, I'm sure I can find one. It'll suit just fine. Mm -hmm. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, good morning, Amos. Get my order ready yet? Yes, sir. Got it all put away out and back. Good. Uh, excuse me, Reagan. There's someone I must see. Good morning, Ben. Oh, uh, good morning, Miss Miller. Good morning. Say, I've, uh, I've heard a most interesting rumor. Oh, what was that? Well, that you're seriously thinking about mining the area above Gunsight. Well, as a matter of fact, I... I have been giving it some thought. Uh, I'd like to talk to you sometime about investing in the venture, I mean. Well, I, uh, Miss Amelia, you know, mining, uh, particularly silver mining, is so highly speculative. I, mm -hmm. I think you'd probably find much safer investments somewhere else. Oh, come now, Ben. I'm not some poor widow investing in life savings. Oh, of course not. No, I'm well aware of the risks involved. But uh, I'm also aware of uh, the rewards commensurate with them. <laughs> Well, to be frank with you, Miss Amelia, I, I just wouldn't want the responsibility of having you possibly lose any money. You sure this is everything, Miss Cartwright? Yes, thank you, Amos. Oh, uh, a couple of packs of cigars for my foreman. Ben, should you change your mind, you, uh, you would let me know? Yes, of course I will. Fine. Is that stuff? Yeah. Good morning, Miss Amelia. Good morning, Haas. Your sister chose the same dress materials as you selected, Miss Amelia. Fine. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Reagan, this is uh, Mr. Cartwright and his son, Haas. Good morning. Hi, man. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Amos, please put that on my account. Here, ma'am, let me, let me take that for you. Thank you. Pleasure, man. You know, we didn't even know that Miss Amelia had a sister, so you're kind of a surprise around here. I might say a real nice surprise, Miss Miller. Thank you. My name is Reagan. Reagan. I don't recollect ever having heard that name before, but I don't reckon many people ever heard of Hoss, neither. Hoss, that's a wonderful name. So big and strong, just like this country out here. Hey, bet you ain't even seen our country, have you? I'd be mighty happy to show it to you if, if you wouldn't mind me coming calling. I think it was very, very thoughtful of you, Haas. I've not had a chance to introduce my sister to many people out here. I'm sure she'd be delighted to have a call. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. I'll sure do it. All right. Bye, Haas. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Miss Reagan. Joe. Yeah, Pa? Didn't Haas cruise that timber up at Gunsight last spring? Yeah, yeah. Don't you remember I went up there and found him bogged down in a snowdrift? Oh, yeah. Where's Haas now? I think I saw him out on the front porch. I don't think he's doing anything. Joseph. Yes, sir. Feet on the floor. Yes, sir. Huh, Adam writes as a firm in Sacramento wants us to quote a price on half a million board feet of timber. And do you think we could handle that out of the tract above Gunside? 
Well, that'll take some doing, Paul. Yeah, well, why don't you ride up there and take a look? We're going to have to clear it anyway if we're going to do any mining. Uh, Paul, can, can little Joe do that instead? Uh, why? Oh, well, I, I promised Miss Reagan that I'd take her for a buggy ride and show her the country. Of course, she ain't, she ain't gonna be here long. I just... Sure. Thanks, Paul. We ate outside. Well, I thought we should take advantage of the lovely weather. Mm. You know, Ben, I don't think I've seen my sister, well, what, content, I suppose, in a long time. No a horse for that matter. Mm. It's been such a beautiful day. Yeah, it sure has. Sort of hate to see it come to an end. Miss Reagan, you, uh, you made up your mind yet? About what, Hoss? Well, about not making this just a visit, but settling down here. Well, I don't know. Settling down has such a permanent sound, doesn't it? Yeah, I reckon it does. But sort of nice sound, too. I mean, it's one that us folks here understand. Well... I don't know if it would be right for a person like me. Oh, sure it'd be right. Why, if the right person came along, it'd be right as rain. Can it ever really be like that, Horse? Sure. I mean, you get married and build yourself a house, raise a family. Like they say, grow old together. Grow old? That's something you ain't gonna have to worry about for a long time yet, Miss Reagan. Uh, come on, you two. We're going to have coffee inside. It's getting chilly out here. Emilia was right. It is chilly out here. Let's go in. Fine. You know, I, uh, I think the Cartwrights actually enjoyed having dinner outside. Um, what were you and Haas, uh, talking about? I think Haas wants to marry me, Amelia. Oh. Well, are you considering it? Yes, I am. You know, you were right. 
Horse is different from any man I've ever known. Well, did you tell him anything about yourself? No. Aren't you afraid it might come up? Strangely enough, I don't think it would make any difference. Do you know, Amelia? He talked about growing old together. You know, I never thought about that. Growing old. Morning, Miss Reagan. I'm just having some coffee. Will you join me? Well, I'd like to very much, but uh, I have so many things I must do in town. My son Adam is coming in tomorrow. And tomorrow evening we have a little uh, dinner party at our home, and we were hoping that uh, you and your sister would join us, just family. Well, we'd be delighted. Horses has told us so much about Adam. Well, I'm sure you'll have a great deal to talk about in common. He's just spent the past few weeks in San Francisco. San Francisco? Yes, yes. Would, um, would 7 o'clock tomorrow be all right? Yes. Yes, that would be fine. Good, we'll be expecting you. Morning. So anyway, old Sally never did find out what happened to his teeth. <laughs> Good evening, Adam. Evening, Miss Amelia. Adam, I'd like you to meet Miss Reagan Miller. This is Miss Amelia's sister. My brother Adam, Miss Reagan. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down, Adam? Thank you. I hope you brought some good news about the mining venture. Mining venture? Mm hmm? Adam, while you were away, Miss Amelia expressed some interest in investing. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid it'll be an expensive installation, but I think it'll be practical. Hey, Adam. Miss Reagan here just left San Francisco about two weeks ago. Now, I know it's getting to be a big town now, but I thought maybe you might have run into some of her friends there. I knew very few mining people there, Horse. Well, I ran into quite a few people while I was there. Someday, maybe you can tell me who your friends are. Yes. Maybe I can. Ah, Ben, thank you for a wonderful evening. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, say, if Adam can get those figures over the house in the morning, I'll get a letter up to my broker in San Francisco. Um, going to have to convert some of my holdings. Well, I think something could be arranged. Do you think so? Ten o'clock be convenient. Hmm? Ten o'clock is fine. Reagan. Good night, little Joe. Good night. Good night, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. Well, the pleasure was all ours, Miss Reagan. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Good night, Miss Miller. Good night, horse. Thank you. Good night, Miss Reagan. It's me that should be thanking you. This is one of the nicest evenings I ever remember. Good night, Miss Amelia. Good night, horse. Miss Reagan Miller. Hmm. Yep. Don't you go get no ideas either, brother. She's all staked out. It's one of the sweetest little gals I ever met. Well, you look at him, Pa. He's got the same expression as a steer that's just been poleaxed. <laughs> well, that's probably the expression I had on my face when I was quoting your mother. Well, he's pretty serious about her. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about time one of you boys started thinking seriously of getting married. Pa, are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> Oh, I was just thinking, uh, since tomorrow's Saturday, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe tomorrow night we couldn't get some of the neighbors over here and have a little get-together and introduce Miss Reagan around, huh? Well, I don't know. It's a little short notice, but mm. I think something might be arranged. Hey, good. And if I'm real lucky, I might even have a little announcement to make. 
Hey, you son of a gun, congratulations. We were just talking about that. And now we get rid of you. How do you get rid of you? Good night, Reagan. Emilia? Yes? Could you come in and talk a while? Well, it's, uh, it's quite late. Yes, I know that. I just don't think I can sleep. Probably realize, of course, that Adam heard about you in San Francisco. I know he did. I could tell the way he looked at me. Yes, I noticed that too. He just couldn't seem to take his eyes off you all evening. Or aren't you worried about that? No, not particularly. Well, you should be. You know, once Adam tells Hoss about you, that not only ends your chances with him, but all my plans as well. Well, he's not going to tell Hoss. And what's to stop him? I've yet to meet the man that I can't handle. Well, Adam is not as naive as Hoss. He's still a man. And men are your business, aren't they, Regan? Yes. Yes, they are, Amelia. Just remember this. The Ponderosa is my business. What you don't seem to understand is I don't want the Ponderosa. I want Hoss. Good night. I'd, uh, I really would like to study these reports just a little longer. All right, that's a good idea. Sure you want to stay for coffee? No, thanks. Uh, I suppose Hoss got by and told you about the party tonight. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. He came by quite early to, uh, to tell us about it. Oh, so that's why I didn't see him at breakfast this morning. He is an early bird, isn't he? <laughs> well, he's also one of the finest men I've ever had the pleasure to know. I'd have to agree with you. Listen, I wonder if I uh, could speak to your sister a minute. Yes, yes, certainly. She's, uh, she's out in the front yard. Thanks. We'll uh, see you tonight, then. Bye. Doesn't look like the same Reagan Miller I've heard about in San Francisco. Oh, you startled me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. What did you hear about me in San Francisco? I think you and I both know the answer to that one. I suppose you've told Hoss. No. Well, thank you for that. Don't flatter yourself. I did it for his sake, not yours. I wouldn't hurt Hoss. Then why don't you stop amusing yourself at his expense? Is that what you think I'm doing? Well, you are famous for the uh, manner in which you amuse yourself, at least in San Francisco, and uh, from what I've heard uh, from other men. No, it isn't true. I'm not like that. Aren't you? I did nothing to encourage those men. And what about my brother? Well, look at me. Do I look as though I'm going out of my way to beguile him? Do I, do I look as though I'm trying to entice him or anybody else? I won't have you telling me what to do. All right. Then I'll tell him. Tell him what? That the woman he loves is some special kind of monster? That I'm supposed to be responsible for every man that falls in love with me, but I'm not supposed to give any love back? I came here to get away, to be, to be ugly, to be plain, to hide, to get away from everything I've been. And I thought I'd found something here. I thought I'd found someone who, who didn't want me just as a, 
as a possession to display or a, a prize to show how important he is. Someone who saw past all of that and wanted me just for myself. Can you understand that? Is that too much to ask? No, I suppose it isn't. You do understand, don't you, Adam? You understand. All I ever wanted was to be loved. Just to be loved. is the brother of the man she's going to marry the way you just kissed me. Well, she's talking about a different kind of love. You can't really change what you are, can you? strange you don't act like you're in a party mood hmm. <laughs> so Regan Miller finally met her match did she you think I failed with Adam don't you mm -hmm. well maybe I did but that's because it wasn't me out there it was something that you tried to make me it will cost me a great deal of money Regan but I've waited years to see you finally meet a man you can't handle a man who can humiliate you. <laughs> Those are the two driving passions of your life, aren't they, Amelia? Money and seeing me humiliated. I tried to warn you. But whatever that devil is is so strong in you, you wouldn't listen. You couldn't take my help. Your help. Your help made me ugly out of jealousy. Your help pushed me at horse out of greed. No, we both have our own personal devils to feed, Amelia. But I prefer mine to yours. Reagan, what are you doing? I'm taking back my own personality. I'm going to show you and Adam how the real Reagan Miller works. Go ahead. Go ahead and prove to Hoss that Adam is right. It won't make any difference. Not a particle, because Hoss loves me. And nothing anybody says can change that. Now go ahead, get dressed. I'll prove it to you. There's nothing in this world that will make me go there and see you flaunt yourself. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. Your greed will make you come, Amelia. Mr. Horse want to see you in Punk House. He very upset about something. Uh, thanks, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Singh said uh, you wanted to see me. Yo, where you been? Well, you know where I've been. I've been over to Miller House to see Miss Amelia. Miss Reagan, you seen her too, didn't you? Didn't you? You asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Here we are. The thing you know how to make, Pa, that's punch. <laughs> sure do.
that? What's this about? Ask him. What's this about? Why were you fighting him? I wasn't fighting him. All right, why was he fighting you? Horse, I must talk to you. There ain't nothing to talk about. Yes, there is. Horse, Adam wasn't trying to hurt you. He was trying to help you. By making love to Regan? No, he went there to talk to her. Sure he did. But he ended up with her in his arms and kissing her. Pa, I'm in love with that woman and I'm gonna marry her. Don't you understand that? What do you know about her? No, Pa! What did you know about my Ma when you married her? I knew everything I needed to know Fine. about Fine. I know everything I need to know about Reagan. You don't know everything about her. You don't know what Adam was trying to tell you. No! Pa, I'm not gonna hear anything bad about Reagan from Adam or you or nobody else. Son, don't blind yourself to the truth about her. I don't care about her past. Oh, so it's not just the past. I'm worried about the future. Yes, fine. So am I. I'm gonna marry her. That's gonna be my future. Hey, Father, guests are arriving. Well, keep them waiting. No. They're my guests, and for my party, I'll invite them in. Pretty tonight for you. I mean, sight more than just plain pretty. Well, if you don't like it, I can change. Oh, no, no. Take a little getting used to it, I reckon. How are you, Miss Amelia? Just fine. Thank you, Hoss. I ain't never been too good at this, but we'll try it. I found what I wanted was a man, not a pretty dancing master. Reagan, I couldn't help seeing what happened this afternoon between you and Adam. For now, we'll just forget that that ever happened at all. I wanted to tell you, Hoss, but I was afraid I'd lose you. Reagan, you... You ain't ever got to be afraid of that. Thank you, Horace. I couldn't stop it. You could see that. 
I know. Lovely tonight. Very fine dancer. Yes. Excuse me. May I? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I can't dance another step. Could we get some air? You have been dancing quite a bit tonight. Of course, let's go outside. This land of yours, don't you, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Then, of course, I'm rather prejudiced in favor of the Ponderosa. His horses, too. <laughs> he often speaks of it as if it were a woman. Yes. His horse loves it very much. Of course, horse always sees everything with uncomplicated, honest eyes. How do you think he sees me? As the woman he wants to marry. And uh, how do you see me, Mr. Cartwright? Well, that depends upon which Reagan Miller I'm looking at. Well, do you approve of this Reagan Miller? Or do you prefer my sister's version? I would guess that the way you are now is the version that most men would know you as. I see Adam has informed you of my infamous past. Did he also tell you what happened this afternoon? Yes. Well, I can imagine what interpretation he put on it. That's not important. What is important? His horse, his happiness. You don't think I can provide that happiness? No. Frankly, I don't. But my son, unlike perhaps most men that you've known, gives his love freely, openly, honestly, without reservation. And even the knowledge of your past couldn't shake it. If he can forgive that, why can't you? I suppose I could. If I thought that you'd really changed. But you don't believe that? No. Well, it doesn't really matter what you think, does it? Or Adam. Because Hoss will marry me anyway. Yes. This horse would marry you anyway. But the love that would forgive you your mistakes in the past would never forgive you those same mistakes in the future. I won't make any mistakes. Won't you? Just this afternoon, horse saw you kiss Adam. But horse understood. Did he? When Adam came home, Hoss almost killed him. Now, what do you think would happen if you made that same mistake again? Hey. What are you two doing out here? Oh, we're just uh, 
Just admiring the night horse. Uh, I better get into our guests. Excuse me. There's a there's a ring around the moon. Could mean that it's going to rain tomorrow. Horse. About this afternoon. Reagan. I told you we weren't going to talk about that anymore. Well, what if I were to tell you that it wasn't Adam's fault? That I had encouraged him? You wouldn't do that. Well, what if I did? You ain't like that. I could be like anything. You don't know anything about me. I... Things like that could have happened to me in the past. That's all over, Reagan. Don't matter. You, you don't have to tell me about those things. Just don't matter. No more than you getting all dolled up for this party. It, it just don't make no difference. I could tell you things that would matter. Oh, I, I know I ain't the first feller. Or the only. I certainly ain't the handsomest. I got, I got a merit tell to me that every morning. Ain't nobody could blame you for searching around for something better. But once you made up your mind that I was the one, then you wouldn't have to search no further, ever. Your father was telling me how much you love this Ponderosa. What if I were to ask you to leave it, to go away? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. What if I just did? I, I hated it, and I wanted to live in a city. If that's what it'd take to make you happy, then that's what we got to do. And leave your father and brothers? Reagan, when we're married, we're going to do whatever it takes to make you happy. What can I tell you to make you realize what I am? Stop it. You stop it right now. I don't want to hear no more talk like that. Reagan, you love me and that's all that counts. Love you? Haven't you understood anything I've been trying to tell you? If I loved you, that would be the worst thing that could happen. Can't you see that? My love would destroy you, horse. Because you'd have to share it with every other man I'd ever meet. How do you know? Stage is leaving, miss.
đi xuống cái nhà chơi một lúc đi cho đỡ chán xong lại lên đây qua đây này chán chưa rồi đi xuống cái nhà chơi một lúc cho đỡ chán xong lại lại lên đừng gõ gõ cái đấy là không bắt số đít đít mềm đấy nha đít mềm nó phẳng chi đít mềm là phải cút của đít đấy mang cái xịt mũi lên mẹ xì cho thôi hai không độ hai không độ mang cái xịt mũi lên mẹ xì cho nhanh lên là không xin được bác Dạ. Vừa nghe thấy à? Ừ. <cười> Thì việc chính của mình là sẽ là như vậy. Sao 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 Thằng Lem Thằng Lem là vẫn đi đâu ngoài Em gợi ý bao giờ nhỉ? Ông Huy gợi ý Ơ thế anh nói gợi ý như nào? có những chiếc lá màu xanh lá cây cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi uh, video hướng dẫn tô màu của mình và đừng quên ấn like uh, subscribe để ủng hộ cho mình nhé xin chào